10 hours of playoff soccer? Yeah, we got some calls to review. This is Instant Replay presented by Cheez It, and we're starting in Cascadia. We start in the fifth minute at Providence Park. The ball is squirting along the six yard box, and here comes Christian Roldan, Bobby, and down goes Christian Roldan under pressure from Timbers keeper Jeff Atanella. Ted Uncle says, no PK. Then VAR, Alan Chapman says, ah, Ted, you should take another look. He does, and he sticks to his guns. Did he make the right call? Atanella definitely takes out Rodon, but I don't know what Rodon is doing. The ball's past him, and he just runs into Atanella. You can't do that. You can't just go running into people and trip over them and expect a foul. This is a great no call. Yeah, you're right. There's a little bit of contact there. The dragging leg, by the way, Rodon's the one dragging it, and maybe, just maybe, though I can't see proof on video, that hand gets him on the foot. One, the hand's not enough contact. I don't see it there. Two, that dragging leg was Roldan's choice. At now it can challenge, no PK, way to go Ted Uncle. Now we go to the 17th minute and the Sounders are leading one to nothing when Diego Valeri plays the through ball to Jeremy Ibobasi. Ibobasi gets on the end of it, takes a touch and scores, but Andrew looks like he might have been offside. That was what you and I thought right when the play happened and I still think that's the case. I think he is marginally offside. But the call on the field is a goal, which means it needs to be clearly and obviously an error, and I don't think it is. Well, this is one of the problems with the video review rule. The referee doesn't blow his whistle until after the ball goes in the goal, meaning the call on the field is onside. And with that, in order to overrule it, it has to be clearly and obviously offside. But if they had just called it offside to begin with, it would have to be clearly and obviously onside, and this is neither, so the new rule helped the Timbers here. Under the rules, I think this rightfully stood as a goal. So the new rule always helps the attacking team on these. How close was it? Well, according to our friend on Twitter, soccer photogrammetry, it was between three and five inches, depending on which angle you use in his mathematical model. That is very, very close, and I think this rightfully stood, even though live, I thought it was offside. All right, let's go to Yankee Stadium. We'll start in the 20th minute. I want to give a shout out for good use of video review. Miguel Miron scores in Atlanta are jacked up, but, and it takes a while, this is offside. Watch this as he takes the touch off the corner kick. Nobody's on the post, therefore he's in an offside position. Well done to VR Alex Chilowitz. Now let's advance to the 41st minute. Leandro Gonzalez Press wins the ball and here comes Alex Ring late. A foul is called and the yellow card is given to Ring, but Andrew, Alex Ring comes in a little high and his studs get LGP on the ankle. Should that have been a red card? It very easily could have been a red card in my opinion, but I like that Kevin Stott went yellow in this case. I think it showed consistency throughout this game. It's a playoff match. He chose the referee at one way. He's the referee. I think he was right to give this one as a yellow. And he had another call to make just two minutes later. Ronald Matarita off the ball on Jeff Lorenowitz. He drives his shoulder into his chest, maybe his chin. Is this violent conduct? No, not at all. Driving your shoulder is part of the game. Yeah, it was a little dirty on Matarita's part, but not a red card. Absolutely should have been a yellow, though. That could affect this series and the playoffs. You know what else affected this series? The goal that was called back in the 49th minute. Young Herrera finishes this play, but rewind just a second. David Villa is going for the bicycle kick. He checks his shoulder. Joseph Martinez is there. He still goes for it. He catches Joseph. Stott says, dangerous play, no goal. Do you agree? Is this professional soccer? It is. And you need to let this stand. Feet go high sometimes. Yes, I do get angry when studs are raised. David Villa didn't expose his studs. He didn't try and win the ball with his studs. He simply tried to kick the ball. He wasn't near somebody's head. He wasn't in danger of hurting an opponent. This absolutely should have stood and the goal should have been allowed. That was my instinct when I first watched it. And I was arguing that for about two hours, but I think I've come around. Joseph Martinez isn't late to this. He turns his back because he's about to get kicked in the head. I think ultimately this is dangerous play. Well done, Kevin Stott. Finally, it's David Villa again, Bobby. 84th minute, right into Greg Garza. I mean, studs to the back. And yet, there's no call here. This could have been a red card. Is this serious foul play? This feels like the exact same type of play I just described. I wouldn't have given a red card here. I wouldn't either just because Kevin Stott kept it consistent, but if you look at this challenge, this is the definition of serious foul play. He's late, studs are exposed, he catches the player with force. I think realistically, in the rule book, this is probably a red card. And last but not least, poor Harrison Awful. You know this show has a certain thing for jingles and ouch, Bobby, that hurts. It's been a while since we covered the jingles, Andrew. All right, that's it from us. Instant Replay presented by Cheez-It for the first leg of the conference semifinals. 
done and dusted. Let us know what you think and join us next time for more controversial calls.